Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the National Catholic College Admission Association's Virtual College Fair. We've got a great program lined up for you this evening with five excellent institutions. Before we get going, I'm gonna make a couple of housekeeping announcements. So to everyone in the audience, your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. But you can should feel free to ask questions at any point in time throughout the presentation by clicking the Q&A button on your screen. Uh, this is the final uh, hour of our session, so there are no additional sessions here after this one, but there will be a recording of this session and all of the sessions from this evening available at the website where you registered, strivescan.com slash nccaa. All right, so we are in session C3 here. This is, a, these, this is the order of our institutions, the University of the Incarnate World, Emmanuel College, the University of San Diego, St. Mary's University of Minnesota, and then the University of Scranton. So we are gonna turn it over to Jessica here from the University of In the Incarnate World in Texas and take it away. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, as he mentioned, my name is Jessica De La Rosa and I am the Director of Admissions at the University of the Incarnate Word. Can you please verify if you're able to see my PowerPoint for me? Yes, we can see it. Uh, it's not full screen yet, though. Okay. How about now? There we go. Great. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm super excited to be talking to you about the University of the Incarnate Word. Uh, we are located in San Antonio, Texas, um, which is an incredible metropolis in its own. We are ever growing. We have a number of um, opportunities for our students to participate in citywide activities, um, internships, uh, everything and anything that you can think of. We have a plethora of restaurants for you um, to enjoy in San Antonio, Texas, just to give you a little bit of I an idea of the city that we're in. We are centrally located, um, and I want to just go ahead and give you a little bit of information about our application process, because I'm pretty certain that's um, important to a lot of y'all. UIW is a test optional campus, which ultimately means you have the option of submitting your test scores. However, they are not required as part of your admissions application, nor are they going to be considered for scholarship. We have no application fee, so you have nothing to lose by applying to UIW. I always say it's an excellent opportunity to get one of your first um, letters of acceptance from any university, please do not uh, waste a applica an application waiver um, with us because we do not charge you an application fee. You can apply to us either through directly through our website at gouiw.edu or through Apply Texas and also the common application. We also do not require an essay, so more fun um, and more exciting news um, and just wanting to share with you how easy it is to apply to UIW and become a member of our Cardinal community. Additionally, we do have direct admit programs. So if you're interested in any health professions because UIW does have five health profession schools, pharmacy, optometry, physical therapy, a school of Medicine and Nursing, which happens to be our biggest program, we do have direct admit programs um, available for you. And as I mentioned, we have five health profession schools. We do have over 90 undergraduate uh, uh, programs that you can be a member of throughout six uh, departmental schools. And so right there is the link to apply at uiw.edu apply. The other exciting thing I mentioned that since we're test optional, you don't have to worry about submitting tests to be considered for admissions or scholarships. All um, students applying to UIW as a first time freshman are automatically considered for an academic scholarship ranging from 5,000 to 20,000 per year that will stay with you up to four years um, that you are pursuing an undergraduate degree at UIW as a full-time student. So I've given you a lot of information and you're gonna hear a lot more. Uh, I will, if I'm able, be able to drop my information in the chat for you. And I will continue to remain on the session to answer any questions you have about the University of the Incarnate Word. Thank you so much. And I um, appreciate all of you being present tonight with us. And I hope that you're having a great end of your, your senior year. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jessica. So we are going to go from Texas and the University of the Incarnate Word to Emanuel College in Massachusetts. Caitlin, take it away. Oh, still muted. 
no matter how long I've been doing this, I always find myself still do it. We all do it. <laughs> well, hi, everybody. My name is Caitlin April, and I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admissions at Emanuel College. So we are located right in Boston, Massachusetts. We're about a five to seven minute walk from Fenway Park. So it really is an amazing area. Um, as you can see here, we have a campus, but at the same time, we're right there in the center of the city. So it's truly the best of both worlds for our students. Um, just a little bit of history about the school. We're actually the only Catholic college that's right within the city limits of Boston. So automatically that kind of sets us apart. And we were founded in 1919 by the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur. So last year or the year before rather was our centennial. Um, we were celebrating 100 years of being around and really were able to look at all of the amazing things that we've accomplished, but also looking ahead at what we want to see for our community in the future. So one of the most recent changes that we've made is we've created five distinct academic schools for our students to choose from. And we did this because we really want our students to have the option to be interdisciplinary. So for us, you know, we may have business students that come to campus um, and we would challenge them to maybe take some psychology courses so that they can better understand consumer behavior or maybe learn a little bit about how a marketing campaign can boost revenue. And we also have students often that will be studying science, but then they're taking arts, uh, yes, yeah, arts or painting and drawing courses so that they can learn how to draw and better depict cell structure. So again, we really wanna make sure that our students are able to discover what their passions are and really be intentional about the courses that they are taking. We have just under 2000 undergraduate students on campus. Um, over 70 different areas of study for our students to choose from. And we're also part of a consortium of schools called the Colleges of the Fenway. Um, so between us, there's four other schools. We're literally right down the street from one another. Um, but our students are able to cross register at those schools and take courses for no extra charge. So I think, especially in a city like Boston, it's really nice to have a set of schools that are not solely competing against one another, but really working together for the benefit of the students. Now on campus in our classrooms, they are fairly small. Average class size is going to be between 16 and 25. Faculty to student ratio is 13 to one. We don't have any adjunct professors on campus. They're all full time. Um, and our, our professors really make it a point to get to know our students. Um, so you're not going to be in a classroom where there's any large lecture halls, um, but really conversation based and learning from your professors, but also your peers. Now at Emmanuel, we really believe that students, um, you know, there is no replacement for being able to get in the real world and get some hands-on experience. And so all of our students participate in some form of experiential learning. I'll start with research. Um, research happens as early as your freshman year. Um, our faculty are all funded by the National Science Foundation. And so the first people that they go to are our students to help them with, with research. And I think one of the things that I love about Emmanuel is that our research is not just designated to students that are studying STEM fields, um, but really all of our majors are able to participate. So we've done some really, really great research on immigration policy and immigration law, um, research on the chemistry of tattoo ink, research on learning different teaching methods and why they may work better in some certain classroom settings rather than others. So just really great things that our students are able to be a part of um, pretty much as soon as they get on campus. Another form of experiential learning are our internships. And as you can see here, 100% of our students will complete at least one internship by the time that they graduate. And this is actually something that is built into our curriculum. Um, it's really important for us to give our students the opportunity to explore and figure out what they like doing, and just as important, what you don't like doing. Um, you know, without our internships, students wouldn't know if they would rather work in counseling and health psychology or more with children and families. Um, they wouldn't know if they'd like to work at a Fortune 500 company versus working at a startup. So you have a lot of assistance with our career center to help you kind of sort through the different internship opportunities and prepare you on that journey as well. Um, the last form of experiential learning that we offer for students is our study abroad program. So we actually have over 500 different study abroad programs for our students to choose from, in addition to learning component courses. Um, so for example, maybe you don't wanna do a whole semester abroad, that's completely fine. Um, we have a course 
you know, that studies marine biology, and then they get to go to Australia and look at the Great Barrier Reef up close. Um, we have a class that gets to study religion, and then they go to India. So again, we really want to challenge our students to take what they're learning in the classroom and apply it outside as well. Um, these are some great stats here on your screen that you can see, but I think my favorite is that 80% of our students that were employed were actually employed in the field related to what they were studying. So it's super important to us to, you know, not just get you a job, but to really make sure that you have the tools and, and the foundation and the knowledge that you need to go forth and pursue your career. In terms of extracurricular activities, sorry, I almost <laughs> messed up on that word. Um, we are part of the NC Division, NCAA Division III athletic program. Um, I think that our coaches do an amazing job of making sure that our students truly embody the word student athlete, challenging them on the core and the field, but also make sure, making sure that they are participating on campus. Um, we have over 100 different student clubs and organizations. So there's tons to do, especially being in Boston. If there's something happening on campus that you're not really interested in, you can walk right off campus. Um, we're super close to the movie theater, bowling alley, there's concerts that happen, but it really is an amazing environment. And I like to think of us as a hidden gem. Um, yeah, it, a great supportive community. So really quickly, you know, when it comes to applying, um, we are free to apply on the common application. We'll need all of the, the typical items, your essay, transcripts, all of that. Um, we are test optional. So if you've taken the SAT or ACT, um, you know, test exams and you don't feel like they reflect the best of your academic ability, you do not have to submit those. The one caveat to that is with our nursing program where we do require test scores. Um, deadlines, pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm going to fast forward ahead because I think most important, you know, especially now when it's very difficult to go out and visit schools, um, and I'm sure most of my colleagues here would agree with this, but definitely connect with us via social media as much as possible. Um, you know, we do a lot of Instagram takeovers where we let students kind of show you what's going on, and it's a great way to learn more about campus if you're not able to visit. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Caitlin. Next up, we have the University of San Diego. I'm going to make a quick plug for the Q&A too. So while um, you are waiting there, feel free to use the Q&A to ask your questions of any of our reps throughout the presentation. They're a great resource to learn about things like internships, what campus life is like, any of those types of things. So without any further ado, take it away, Scott. Thank you so much. Uh, how's everyone doing? My name is Scott Young. I'm one of the senior admission counselors for the University of San Diego. Say hello from the West Coast. Uh, a little bit about the University of San Diego. We were founded in 1949 by the Diocese of San Diego and the Sisters of the Sacred Heart. There was a men's college, a women's college, and a law school. 72, they merged them all together to form now what we know as University of San Diego. We're a little bit unique because we're not affiliated with any particular order, so we're not a Jesuit school or a um, Franciscan school. We're governed by an independent board of trustees. On that board of trustees, there's two seats for each of the founding party members. So they're very much engaged in the direction of USD. About 40% of our students identify with the Catholic faith tradition at USD. The remainder of our students identify with a different faith base or no faith at all. So you'll find USD to be a very inclusive campus regardless of your religious beliefs, your gender, your sexual orientation, your socioeconomic status. Uh, it's a very warm and inviting place to be able to be a part of. The only religious requirement we have is one lower division, one upper division, religious theology studies. Uh, outside of that, we do not require students to go to mass or be a part of the campus ministry. But if you're looking for that component, we have an amazing campus ministry that's super engaged not only on our campus, but in our community. And they do a lot of great work down in Mexico with uh, the border of Mexico being about 30 minutes away from our doorstep. So we are a mid-sized institution. We have about 5,900 undergraduates, 2,900 graduate law students on campus. About 48% of our students are out of state, 9% of our students are international, and the remainder of our students are from the state of California, pretty even divided between Northern and Southern California. As well, uh, we are ranked sixth most beautiful campus in the nation by Princeton Review. Uh, Mother Rosalie Hill is one of the founding party members of the university, really believed in beauty, truth, and goodness. She really believed that beauty would draw people to the university, thus causing them to really seek the truth uh, through their schooling, and in doing so, would really bring out the goodness. And we do see that's true to this day uh, as we still ho hold to those three pillars that she had when she first started it back in 1949. So we offer 42 majors at the University of San Diego. 
One of the really cool things about USD is that if you are admitted to USD, everybody comes in undeclared. You can declare that first semester if you know what you want to do, or you can wait all the way up to your fourth semester to declare your major, double major, major minor, major double minor, whatever sort of that, that population that's going to be able to allow you to be able to really have the degree that you want that's going to allow you to go on to the workforce and really do the job that you're looking to be able to be a part of in the workforce. Uh, with that, you're guaranteed to be able to get all the coursework to be able to graduate in four years. The only caveat to that is our engineering degree. By design, it's a four and a half year long program. And that's because our students will graduate with both a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science. Uh, and, we, and we are ranked 13th in the nation when it comes to our engineering degrees. As well as pre-professional advising. So we have pre-medical, pre-dental, pre-law, pre-health. So if you're looking for that, usually students will declare that that first semester. And it's just a great opportunity to really make sure where you're getting additional advisor to make sure you know the prerequisites needed for graduate school. Uh, the internship opportunity, undergrad research opportunities, um, as well as taking the MCAT, the LSAT, the data, whatever, preparing that between your junior and senior year. Average class size is 22. We cap all of our courses at 40. And our student to faculty ratio is 13 to 1. And we are the youngest private institution in the top 100, according to US News and World Report. So we feel very proud of that um, accolade as well. We have over 180 clubs and organizations on campus. We have 17 Division I athletic programs. We're part of the West Coast Conference, with the exception of our football team. They're part of the uh, Pioneer League. As well, we over, have over 50 club and intramural sports. We have 30 plus cultural organizations on campus, 65 plus honor professional societies, uh, 20, uh, nine sororities and nine fraternities. So there really is something for everyone on the campus to be able to be a part of. We're also what they call an Ashoka Changemaker Campus. Uh, this is a distinction. We're one of 45 campuses worldwide that has that designation. And we find that the students that are looking to come to USD and who thrive at USD are the students who are looking to use their talents, their strengths, their passions to really to better the world in which we live in. Ashoka U uh, is this nonprofit. It's sort of the criteria they use to be able to define a Changemaker Campus is it based upon that ongoing commitment to social justice, social innovation, entrepreneurship, sustainability, global perspective. And like I said, we find our, our students are very engaged, whether it's water sustainability on our campus, maybe it's serving the homeless uh, in downtown San Diego, or maybe it's working with orphanages or individuals who've been pulled out of the sex trade industry in uh, the border, on the border, trying to help them to reclaim their lives. Uh, there's so many different opportunities for our students to be able to serve. We have 75 plus service learning courses uh, where you can actually serve in the community and get college credit for that as well. And then with our study abroad, we're ranked second in the nation when it comes to our study abroad participation. We have over 80 programs in 80 different countries. We do have a USC campus in Madrid, Spain, which is a very popular destination. Uh, two years ago, my daughter, who is a senior at USD, actually went to Cork, Ireland, where she sent this, spent this semester as well. When it comes to the application requirements, common app exclusive, um, one letter of recommendation from somebody who knows you academically. We too, at this moment, are test optional, but there's a good chance that we're gonna go test blind again. So this past year, we are test blind. We're in discussions right now. There's a good chance that we will be test blind, which means that we won't even take into consideration test scores, but at the very least, we'll be test optional. Uh, and I do wanna reassure you that if you choose not to submit your test scores, you're still gonna be considered for admission, you'll be considered for merit scholarship, as well as being considered for the honors program that we offer. There is a $55 fee. Is this is a hardship as well, we will um, just reach out to us. We can give you a waiver to cover that. And then real quick here, just uh, with merit scholarships, uh, last thing I want to touch on real quick, uh, we offer merit scholarships. The top 40% of admitted students uh, automatically receive merit. This past year ranged from 18 to 25,000. That amount, amount is renewable every year, providing that the student maintains a 3.0 GPA while at USD. And then we have some additional scholarships, but my time is up. I will put my information into the chat box. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me as well. But thank you for your time, and I wish you guys the best of luck. All right. Thank you, Scott. So now we go from University of San Diego in California over to Minnesota and St. Mary's University. Brenda, take it away. Thanks, Dan. There we go. Hi everyone, welcome. I am Brenda Jones. I'm an Associate Regional Director of Admission with St. Mary's University of Minnesota. We are actually located in Winona, Minnesota, which is way down in the Southeast corner of the state of Minnesota. We call ourselves 
we say we're in the Miami part of Minnesota. So um, Winona is a town of about 26 plus thousand. And there are three colleges in the town of Winona. So um, between St. Mary's and the other two universities, it, we bring in about another additional 11,000 or so students to um, the town of Winona. So college students make up about a quarter of the population. So it truly is a college town. I think one of the greatest things about uh, Winona is actually its location. It does sit on the Mississippi River. Next to the Mississippi River are high hills, which we refer to as the bluffs. So lots and lots of outdoor recreation going on in Winona. We are about a two hour trip to Minneapolis, which is straight north of us. We are about a 40 minute trip to Rochester, which is where Mayo Clinic is. And we are about a four to five hour drive from um, Chicago. So here you can see lots of pictures of Winona. Um, like I said, there's lots of outdoor recreation going on. So between the lakes and the Mississippi River, there's opportunities for lots of water activities, whether it be kayaking, canoeing, paddle boarding, ice skating in the wintertime. The bluffs are often used for hiking, rock climbing, ice climbing, um, hike, just plain hiking up in the bluffs. Um, and then we also have a lot of culture in Winona. So there's a fabulous art museum in Winona. Um, lots of festivals come to Winona, a Beethoven festival, a Shakespeare festival. Um, and we have a really quaint downtown with um, lots of different locally owned eating establishments, cute little coffee shops and boutiques. So the campus um, in Winona, St. Mary's University of, of Minnesota's campus in Winona is 1100 undergraduate students. We have a graduate campus, but that campus is located in the Twin Cities. So about two hours away from us. The students on our campus are, are only being awarded bachelor's degrees. So they're going to be students that have graduated from high school. Um, they may have transferred in from a community college, but they're working towards that first four year degree. Um, our male to female ratio is about half and half, depending on the year. Um, and about 85% of our students live on our campus. So you can tell in the picture up on the right hand side, um, that's a picture of the campus. About 100 acres of it is our actual residence halls, um, the academic buildings, our athletic playing fields. But then we own about 350 acres up in the bluffs. So lighted trails up in the bluffs for our students to use. Um, lots of students love to go up there and do hammocking now. Um, bonfires, sledding in the winter time. So again, like I said, lots and lots of outdoor recreation going on. We have a trout stream that runs through campus. We have an 18 hole disc golf course on campus, beautifully groomed cross country ski trails. And we do sit on the edge of town, but we are within walking distance to many of the restaurants and shopping grocery stores. And believe it or not, in 2016, we were named the number one safest college town in America. So about a third of our students are student athletes that are participating in one of our NCAA Division III sports. Those you can see on the screen here. Um, we do have intramural sports with their, which are very popular and seven club sports. Some of our club sports are ultimate frisbee, water polo, men's hockey, Nordic skiing, soccer, and even ballroom dancing. A lot of our students are involved in the arts. So we have a very strong music and a very strong theater program. Um, students are welcome to participate in those even if they're not majoring in them. We do award music scholarships to non-majors. So if you do have a musical talent, we do encourage you to audition for one of our music scholarships. I always say it's a way to get paid for doing what you love to do anyway. We also have over 50 clubs and organizations. Those are special interest clubs. They, a lot of students participate in student activities committees, student senate, campus ministries is big, a lot of service going on. And again, some type of recreation. St. Mary's has many traditions. We have a couple of variety shows that, are, that students audition for. We have a benefit dance every year. 
lots of service again. And of course, our, our Christmas uh, tree lighting service and uh, pre-finals breakfast. As far as academics, when you apply to St. Mary's, you are applying to St. Mary's, you can major in whatever you wanna major in. We do have over 40 different majors. Um, we do have one selective major, which is our three plus two physicians assistant program that we do in partnership with Mayo. And we do have a, a host of other programs that we are going to start offering this fall, which we're super excited about. One of those is a BS in nursing. So we do award financial aid at the time of application. We award merit scholarships, out-of-state grants, Catholic high school grants, alumni legacy, and also visit scholarships. We do have a presence on social media, so we encourage you to follow us there. We are currently doing visits on campus in person. We would love to have you come visit at St. Mary's so that we can share a little bit more about what we think is so special. Thanks and have a great night. Thank you, Brenda. All right. So we are going to go from Minnesota now to Pennsylvania, the University of Scranton. Take it away, Jessica. All right. One last plug for the Q&A. We've got a few more minutes to get your questions answered. Feel free to type your questions into that Q&A uh, and uh, we'll, your admission counselors here will get them answered. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dan. Hello, everyone. My name is Jessica Shrella. I'm an admissions counselor here at the University of Scranton, but I'm also an alum of the university. Um, we are located in Scranton, Pennsylvania, uh, which you might recognize from the office, um, but Scranton, Pennsylvania, it's northeastern Pennsylvania. We're about two hours from New York City, as well as two hours from Philadelphia, um, which comes in really handy for our students. Um, in terms of who we are, we are a proud Catholic and Jesuit university. Uh, we are one of the 27 Jesuit colleges in the nation here. Uh, and while a majority of our student body may identify as Catholic or Christian, we're certainly welcoming of students of all different faiths, backgrounds, and identities here at the university. Uh, in terms of receiving a Jesuit education, uh, we really have our Jesuit philosophy rooted in a Latin phrase called cura personalis, which translates to care of the whole person. So we define this as the individual attention we devote to each and every one of our students here at the university, which allows them uh, to really succeed not only academically, but fosters a commitment to um, growth in all ways, both uh, mentally, emotionally, uh, and socially as well. Uh, on the screen now, you'll see some fast facts about us in terms of our overall size. We're about a smaller to medium sized university with about 3,800 undergrads, give or take a couple hundred, um, but pretty small. Uh, it helps with our class sizes. Our average class size is 20 students and we have a student to faculty ratio of 13 to one. Um, all of our courses are capped at 35 students maximum. So that really is the most packed a class will ever be here. But even so, it's pretty rare that, uh, you know, that you'll have more than a handful of classes uh, that are at that 35 capacity throughout your time at the University of Scranton. In terms of academics, we have a nice array of 68 majors, 48 minors, graduate programs, concentrations. We do also have five honors programs uh, here and then a number of accelerated graduate programs as well that are direct entry. All of our majors are broken up between three academic colleges. Uh, we just divide them up that way as they make sense. We have our College of Arts and Sciences, which encompasses all of our science related majors as well as our humanities and majors like communication, criminal justice, uh, and so on. We also have our Kanye School of Management, which encompasses all of our business related majors. Uh, our Kanye School of Management is also AA and CB accredited. And lastly, we have our Paniska College of Professional Studies, which encompasses all of our helping professions. So uh, programs like our direct entry nursing program, our occupational therapy program, kinesiology, doctorate physical therapy, education, counseling and human services, all that good stuff. No matter what college your major falls under, you can absolutely uh, still uh, either double major or take a few different minors in different subject areas that are in the different colleges. So you really have the opportunity to uh, personalize your academics while really diversifying your academic background at the same time. Um, we also have two really robust advisory programs, both pre-health and pre-law. So if you're thinking of going to medical school, dentistry, veterinary, optometry, podiatry, pharmacy, uh, pre-physician's assistant, this program will be for you. And of course, 
Thinking Law School, our pre-law program uh, is a wonderful, wonderful route to go. Uh, and then we do also have faculty student research programs that start as early as your first semester here as a first year student. Students of all majors can engage in faculty student research very early on here at the university. In terms of what there is to do on campus, we have a lot of different clubs and organizations, uh, everything from academic affiliated clubs uh, to more special interest clubs. For example, there's a gaming club, there's a knitting club. We have two acapella teams, performance music, student government, uh, and all that other good stuff. We also do have over 900 events each year, uh, ranging from on-campus uh, events. Uh, and in a traditional year, a number of off-campus trips as well. Uh, for example, there's been trips to Dornier Hershey Park, maybe to go to New York City to see a Broadway show. So there really is always something to do. And again, our location comes in really handy uh, when it comes to those off-campus trips as well. Uh, other ways students get involved is through our varsity sports. So we do have 23 uh, men's and women's varsity sports teams. We are a division three landmark conference school, uh, but we also have a nice array of different club and intramural sports as well. Uh, so the students could still play sports that they really love and enjoy, um, but of course not as much of a time commitment uh, as a varsity sport would be. And then when it comes to applying, uh, on the screen now you'll see our accepted student profile for test scores and GPA. Uh, this is just our middle 50% for all of our programs. So these ranges reflect half of the student body we've accepted. We accept 25% above and below these ranges. So again, if you don't exactly fall within these ranges, uh, it's not the end all be all. Um, we super score both the SAT and ACT. Um, so if you do take those exams multiple times, be sure to send all of your scores. We will only use your highest score to evaluate your application, both for admission as well as any merit-based scholarships, which do not require a separate application. Uh, eligible students can apply test optional. We are a traditional test optional school all the time. Um, so if you do not want to apply with your test scores, you can do so as long as you're not applying for our three most competitive programs, which are nursing, OT, DPT, as well as any of our education programs and our accelerated direct entry uh, grad programs. Uh, we're free to apply to, we're on the Common App. That is our preferred way to apply. So it's very free and very easy. Um, and then we do have an early action deadline of November 15th, um, which is different from early decision. Early decision is binding, early action is non-binding. So definitely apply early action. Otherwise, we are regular admission, uh, rolling admission pretty much, and our preferred deadline is March 1st. Um, and aside from that, we take a holistic approach to reviewing applications in addition to, of course, reviewing uh, GPA and test scores to really get the best picture of who you are as a student overall. Uh, we are offering on-campus visits at this time, uh, but we also do longer virtual information sessions as well uh, that you can partake in if you'd like. Uh, so definitely head to scranton.edu forward slash visit for more information on those. Um, but I will also be dropping helpful links in the chat as well. Um, so thank you all for your time. All right, Jessica, thank you very much. I'm gonna welcome back all of our reps here and uh, to join me for our next portion of this program. We're gonna ask a couple of quick questions and get their advice on what would you give, uh, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Jessica, do you wanna start with you? Yes, thank you. Um, my advice to students would be, you know, obviously continuing the search, um, researching, visiting their websites, but also <clears throat> reaching out to counselors um, and other members of various departments, whether it's advising, financial aid throughout the depart throughout the university. And if at all possible, I, I do know that we are all, you know, the representatives here tonight are spread across the United States, but if it's at all possible, um, to participate in a virtual tour um, that, that they may be offering. UIW does provide a virtual tour through our website. We also have a drive-through tour, you know, if you're ever in San Antonio um, and if you're able to visit your campuses um, so that way you can get a feel for what it's gonna be like um, for you to be on that campus. And I always just encourage students, if you are on campus or at an event, kind of gauge the environment and see if, um, you know, people are welcoming and and asking you if you need any assistance, but don't hesitate to ask questions. That's the biggest thing is we are all here to help you um, on your journey and get you to the next step. Um, we were all at one time in your shoes or myself. I have a daughter who um, is a student at UIW. So I, you know, as a parent can relate to that. So I would just encourage you to ask questions. Don't be shy. <clears throat> 
Okay, do you want to go next? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think that, you know, I think it's important to keep an open mind during your college search and um, not just go by name brand of school, but really start to look into what your interests are. Um, and like Jessica said, if you can visit the school and really try to figure out what the environment or atmosphere of the school is. Um, if you're able to visit, that's an awesome way to just walk around campus, interact with students and see what's going on. Um, but another piece of advice is as you start doing the college tours and visits, keep a little, maybe not a notebook, but maybe just if you wanna jot it down in your phone, um, just write down your initial reactions because, you know, for example, say you're looking at a lot of small liberal arts schools, I guarantee you at at one point, they're all going to start to blend together. Um, hopefully, the one you love will stick out to you. But just keeping down your or jotting down your initial reactions will kind of help you um, keep things organized and remind you of how you felt when you visited that campus. And I would recommend. Um, I, I think those are great ideas. And one of the things you can actually do is that as you guys travel, if you go travel or anywhere during the summer or even where you guys live, visit different campuses around you. And it may not be a campus you're looking to attend, but check out the size, the location. Are any of those things appealing to you? Because if you walk onto a campus and it's a large school and maybe you don't like that particular campus that you're on, but you really like the feel of a large school, now you know to start looking maybe for larger schools that, because it seems like a better fit. As counselors, we're always looking for those students who are gonna be a best fit for our university. Your biggest responsibility is to find those colleges that are gonna be a best fit for you and one other tip I would give you is that whatever, uh, whenever you check in, like if you're doing a student tour or a, if you a virtual tour or whatnot, whatever email address you're gonna use, make sure that's the same email address that you use when you apply, because otherwise they can't sync it up to know that you actually attended or visited that campus. So it is important to make sure that you maintain the same um, email address as you go through the process as well. I think I'm next, right, Dan? So um, I think my biggest piece of advice would be to answer the phone when that school calls you. I think sometimes it's so scary for you as a student because you think that they're gonna it's that they're gonna have this hard sell and you don't you're not gonna know what to say. I can honestly tell you those people that are calling you from St. Mary's University of Minnesota are usually our current students. So they're the best people to talk to. They're the ones that are there experiencing it and they can tell you what it's actually like to be a student there. And if it's me that's calling you, it's usually for some important thing like, we need your transcripts or I see that you are in choir and we have a we have a music scholarship that's that needs to have an audition and it's, going to be the deadline soon and we really want you to take advantage of that. So I don't think that you need to be afraid of us when we do call you. I think um, it's easy to, you know, with the unknown, not knowing what we're going to ask or how you're going to answer it. But I think we're just, we just want to reach out to you. We want to be there available to you. And I would just encourage you to answer those phone calls. The other thing is, set your voicemail up so that you can get voicemails from us and then listen to your voicemails. <laughs> so thanks. Yeah, so uh, all my colleagues here gave really, really great advice and I would echo all of that, especially asking questions. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you. We're real people who read your applications. So ask us questions, but also my biggest piece of advice I would say um, you know, is not to feel pressure throughout your college search process and especially pressure to have to feel like you need your major exactly figured out. Um, I can't tell you how many times I talk to students that are nervous to go undecided because they may think going undecided may make them look a little bit worse of an applicant than other students who may be applying for a more specific programs. So um, definitely if you don't have it all figured out, you know, don't, don't feel, don't feel that pressure. It's okay. You know, you're, you're young, you have time. Um, and that's what this process is all for is to really figure out, figure out, you know, what you want to do. Um, and, you know, again, that's what we're here for to help answer your questions. Awesome. Thank you so much for that great advice for our students. So we've got five minutes left. And in our last five minutes, uh, I'd like you to each talk a little bit more about that was some great general college search advice. But I'm each going to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit more about your own campuses. So what's your favorite event or tradition that your uh, institution does? 
Um, at the University of the Incarnate Word, and I'm just going to show you a quick uh, pic, we have what's called a light the way. And it ultimately, uh, we illuminate our entire campus. And I hope you can see the picture that I'm sharing with you with Christmas lights and provide students and families and the general public um, an opportunity to come and visit our campus. And it's, it's beautiful. And it's that we, the first night we usually um, light the campus the, the Saturday before Thanksgiving um, and run it in through January 6th um, through the Christmas season. And we have food trucks and it's just, an amazing gathering of everybody in the community and on campus, you know, students and faculty and administration and staff and the general public, like I mentioned, that'll just come and, um, you know, in a, in a traditional year, be able to just congregate. And we have, you know, children's activities and Santa and pictures with Santa and alumni um, circle. And it's just, it's so much fun to be able to gather and just join um, in celebration of you know everybody and, and each other and and, and that <clears throat> the coming season, especially as a Catholic university and the traditions that we have. Um, so that's probably I have I have a couple of others too, but I know I'm just supposed to give one. So, but but like the way if you're ever in San Antonio over the Christmas season, I always encourage um, students and families to come to, to drive through the campus um, at any given moment that we have the lights on. Thank you. I'm gonna kind of cheat because I really can't decide between two, um, but I'll say them really quickly. So the first one is our dance marathon that we host for the Boston Children's Hospital, which is actually right behind our campus. But basically it's 24 hours of dancing and you have a team of six people and someone from your team has to be on the floor dancing the whole time. And if they wanna sit out, then they have to tag someone else in. Um, but we raise a lot of money for the children at the hospital. It's an amazing event. Um, the other thing is during exam week, we have like a series of events, even though I know exam week is not fun for you all as students, but we do the best that we can to make it a little bit less stressful. So we have people come on campus to give massages. Um, we do moonlight breakfast. So all the faculty and staff, we come back to campus and serve you breakfast at midnight since we know you're up studying. And then my favorite is that they bring in like baby barn animals. So there's like puppies and bunnies and you can kind of just hang out with them and hopefully relieve some stress as you study for finals. Um, at the University of San Diego, so one of the traditions is that in the seal, it's in Maher Hall. The tradition is that if you step on that seal, then you won't graduate in four years. So people go out of their ways to make sure that they don't step on the seal. And then I said by the event would be our homecoming weekend. Uh, it's an incredible event the whole weekend. Uh, they actually set up carnival rides. Uh, they always have a band, so they'll have a concert. I know about seven years ago, they had Imagine Dragons that actually uh, played at the concert. Um, it's just an amazing time. It's a great time where the students are coming together because it's, it's usually about two weeks in. So for the first year students, it's a great opportunity just to sort of see what USD is all about. And then having all the alumni come back is always an incredible opportunity as well. So... At St. Mary's, we have a lot of the things that they've already talked about, um, but I would say that um, one of the things that we have that's unique is the Taylor Richmond Benefit Dance. Um, this is a dance that was named after um, the child of one of our employees at St. Mary's who had a rare genetic uh, disorder and died from that. And so every year the students get together and they select someone in the community, whether that's the St. Mary's community or whether that's the Winona community at large, that also is experiencing something like that, that they raise money for. So it's, it's a dance where the students get really dressed up, they buy tickets, there's a big silent auction. So lots of money is raised and then it is presented to that family so that they can use it for medical expenses or whatever they may have. So um, it's, it's a great opportunity for the students to do some kind of service um, for somebody that's a member of the community, but also have fun and be able to get dressed up and enjoy themselves for an evening. Um, my favorite tradition that we have here at the University of Scranton, I would say it's a tradition, but also an event. Um, it's uh, this event called the Great Commons Ball Roll. So we do have international service trip programs. So every year to fundraise for our international service trips, um, we do the Great Commons Ball Roll. And it's essentially where uh, students, faculty and staff can purchase tennis balls um, for a small fee. They could purchase as many tennis balls as they'd like. Uh, they number the tennis balls. Um, and then we go to the top of the hill of campus, uh, the top of the commons and 
load all the tennis balls in the back of a pickup truck um, and dump all the tennis balls down the commons. So they kind of race down. Um, so whoever's balls make it down all the way to the commons first, I'll usually win like a few little prizes, um, but it's always a really big event on campus. There's always usually tons of free pizza, free Rita's Italian ice, uh, Faculty members will usually let their classes out early so they can all see the, the ball roll, but it's a really fun uh, day on our campus uh, and always for a, a great cause too. Fantastic. Uh, those all sound really fun. And I, <laughs> um, so thank you. As we wrap this session up, I want to say thank you very much to all of our reps from coast to coast that have joined us this evening to share all this great information. Thank you, students and families, for joining with us. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a very quick four-question survey. And if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit of feedback with us, we'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, this recording for this session and all of our sessions are going to be available next week at strivescan.com slash NCCAA. And uh, with that, I want to say thank you again and have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.